let's calculate the height above Earth's surface where you need to put a satellite in order for it to undergo geosynchronous orbit. What is geosynchronous orbit? It's the orbit for which the satellite stays over the exact same place on Earth. So in this case, our satellite is Bender. And let's say, for example, Japan wants uh, some, some TV, satellite TV. So they put up Bender to emanate these signals for the children to enjoy their cartoons. And as the Earth rotates, Bender is orbiting at the same rate. And that's because Bender is in a geosynchronous orbit. So Bender tracks Japan perfectly, stays over the same spot. People get their TV in Japanese, which is good if you're Japanese. Great. That is geosynchronous orbit. Let's calculate what that height is. So let's first draw a little picture. So here's Earth. Here's a Bender, his antenna. And let's let this be the distance r. That's the distance between the two objects from the center of mass of Earth to the satellite. And if we draw the free body diagram, well, there's only one force acting on Bender, and that's the force of gravity. So, because Bender is far from the surface of Earth, we need to use Newton's universal law of gravity, and that is equal to g m m over r squared, where this is the universal constant of gravity, Big M is the mass of Earth, the little m is the mass of Bender, and R, again, is the distance between the two objects. Well, Bender is going in a circle. When something's going in a circle, it's undergoing centripetal motion. So, because this is the only force, we know it equals ma, but what is that a? It's the centripetal acceleration. So we can write that as mv squared over R. We also notice right away that Bender's mass cancels out. I divide both sides by Bender's mass, it disappears. That tells us even if Bender gains weight, that same distance above Earth, he will maintain a geosynchronous orbit. All right, well, we know what the mass of Earth is, we know what the universal constant is, and we want to find R, so we just need to solve for the velocity. So I know that the speed of Bender is his distance over the time. Well, what is the distance? It's the circumference of the circle he makes. So that's 2 pi r. And what is the time? It's the period, the time of one orbit. So I'll give that a capital T. And for Earth, it's 24 hours. Great. So that's v. v squared would simply be the square of this, 4 pi squared r squared over t. So let's plug that in for v, and I get 4 pi squared r squared over t, whoops, t squared. And that's all divided by a 1 over r. So I can see that this guy will cancel, one of these guys cancels with that guy. And now I will, well, let's write out the other side. So we want to isolate for r. So let's combine our r terms. So I'll multiply both sides by r squared. And if I do that, these guys cancel. And now I just have g m equals 4 pi squared over t squared. And r squared times r is r cubed. And now I will boldly multiply both sides by t squared over 4 pi squared. And you can see that here, things cancel. And I've now isolated r cubed. And I'll just write it out here. r cubed is equal to gm period squared all over 4 pi squared. So now it's just a matter of plugging in values. What are those values? Well, those values are Universal constant of gravity, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared over kilogram squared. I know the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th k. 
kilograms. And then finally, we'll need the radius of the Earth in a second. And that's simply 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Well, if I take these two values and plug in here, and then I also take the period of the Earth, which is, well, I'll write that over here. Period of the Earth is 24 hours. And 24 hours, if you convert into seconds, we can do that. There's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So the hours cancel. And I get 86,400 seconds. So plug this in for period. Plug in the mass of the Earth. Plug in the universal constant of gravity. Multiply it out. And you get 7.53 times 10 to the 22nd meter cubed. Great. Only thing left to do is to take the cube root of both sides. And if you do that, you get that the distance between the center of Earth and Bender for geosynchronous orbit is 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. And if you want to know this distance, let's call it r prime, you just take this value here, Subtract off the radius of Earth, and you get 3.58 times 10 to the 7 meters. That is the distance above Earth's surface for a geosynchronous orbit.